Hey there, welcome to Black Gumbo Southern Gardening. Just a short little video today about common tomato problems. Yeah, it's not looking good for my tomatoes. Uh, this is a problem of birds. We've already talked about that. But uh, my tomato crop is pretty much coming to an end and it's a combination of pest pressure and unfortunate weather. We have had uh, weeks of constant rain and there's more in the forecast. And I wanna show you what rain does to your setting fruits. We've got a lot of pest pressure and because of the moisture in the air and the humidity, we've got a lot of uh, common diseases coming onto our tomatoes. So I just wanna take a short video and, and show you what's going on and take a look. When you see something like this, this is most likely a wilt Fusilla, I don't even remember how to say it. It's some sort of a wilt or a fungal disease. It's not quite like blight, but uh, this you'll notice it usually starts at the older lower leaves and works its way up the plant. Up here the plant's still healthy and growing quite well, but down here we've got some late season blight uh, or uh, wilt coming in. And it turns these leaves like that. That's very characteristic of these late season diseases. And there's not a whole lot I can do about this at this point except remove this foliage and discard it, not compost it, but just discard it. You can see I've got some bug pressure in there too, but uh, yeah, this is, this is a pretty common uh, thing you're going to see on your tomatoes. And what you want to do in the late season, like I said, remove these leaves and do not compost them. You'll notice it really decimates this plant. So that's common and I'm seeing it on certain varieties. I'm not seeing it on this hybrid, which is supposed to be a, a disease resistant hybrid. This hybrid does not have that kind of uh, presentation down there at the bottom. That one does, there we go. There is the beginnings of the end of this plant. And most of these you'll see, they're really down close to the ground and that's what happens. There's some more right there. These volunteer leaves that came up by themselves, yeah, I should have pruned those off because those are inviting all kinds of problems. You can see that's that's caterpillar pressure. There's probably some army worms in here, and uh, but that that's some sort of a late season disease. Now I have trouble identifying a lot of these diseases because they all tend to look the same. Let's go around the other side. I see some more. All right, you can see these little specks and spots on the leaves. Um, and some of the yellowing and, and browning of the leaves. This is very common in the late season. And once again, I'm not entirely sure which particular kind of fungus or bacteria is causing this, but it's almost surely soil borne and promoted by the humidity here. And so you'll notice they start on the lower leaves and gradually you start to see it further up. So these plants, their days are numbered and you don't want to put this, once again, you don't want to put this in your compost pile. You want to leave this kind of stuff in the trash. Yeah, there's some there. What are you doing down in here, Phoebe, huh? Are you the tomato inspector? Huh? Get out of the garden. Here is a sad case of simply stressed out plants. You notice that the browning leaves are pretty much uniformly distributed over this plant. They, they don't start at the bottom and work their way up, although there's still some green leaves trying to grow there. Uh, this plant um, showed me stress from heat. When it got you know, a nice heat snap, and this plant just kind of didn't like that. So at certain temperatures, you're gonna see this kind of thing. The plant right next to it is the same variety. and has some selective branch die off. Again, this could be a disease, this could be wilt, but. The fact that there's so much of it high up in the in the plant um, as compared to you know those over there with the diseases beginning low this tells me that this was mainly stress induced damage now what can happen is a plant can be stressed out by heat or by overwatering or whatever it can be stressed out and um, that'll knock back its vigorous growth and its vitality a bit and when you have a plant that's stressed well uh, diseases move in, insect pressure, bugs, they all, they all can sense that in a plant and they know, okay, that's, that's a weak plant, let's move in for the kill. And so that's what's happened with these guys. 
they got heat stressed or water stressed and they're just not as vigorous a type as those hybrids that I was showing you. Here's another late season problem I showed you in another video. See those two right there? Those two are procreating. Those are called leaf footed bugs and they're pretty hard to control at this time of the year and they congregate they congregate around your tomatoes. They're piercing bugs and they pierce your fruit, leave unsightly marks and kind of make the fruit not very sightly. There's another one right there. I like to come out and knock them into a dish of soapy water and they drown doing the 50 meter dash. And Yeah, that's the easiest way to deal with these. You can knock them back significantly with one garden walk and you just get in there and just tap them. They're not going to bite you and they fall into the dish of water. In fact, let's go bug hunting. All right, these two guys that were on here doing the nasty, they're going in the bucket. They don't know it yet, but there they go. All right, there's one that flew off. It can actually be kind of fun to hunt these bugs. There's one there. I just put my bucket under it, shake the bug down in there. Kind of hard to get you in here without spooking the bugs. There we go knocked one in. You know the funny thing about these edox tomatoes is they're still putting on fruit even though they're starting to show a lot of stress down below. I may leave them for a few more weeks and see if some of these blossoms actually produce. If they do, we might be surprised at how much we can get out of here. If it'll only stop raining. Friends, here's another problem you're gonna find in tomato gardens. Let me show it to you. Look at that fella. That is the tomato hornworm and it's the first one I've found and it's huge. Look at it, it's about the size of my finger. So we're gonna pluck him up. I'm gonna take him in the dark and show you a neat trick. That's the biggest tomato hornworm I've ever seen. They're named such because they have this little horn on the back, but check this out. I have an ultraviolet flashlight, UV. I'm gonna flip the light out. These guys, they kind of glow in the dark. See how they illuminate like that? And so you can see them from afar at night. Go out into your garden, look at that. He's glowing like a light stick right there. You just shine your light around, and when you see that flash of light, you see that guy glowing, you can go pluck him off out of there. It's good chicken food right there. So with caterpillars, you could do the same thing. You see your big caterpillar, you can just pluck them off just like that and then they take a bath and in that soapy water there's no uh, there's no surface tension and they go down and join the other bugs for a swim they go swim with the fishes there we go in that awful pestilence it's the year of it so finding a huge worm like that a huge caterpillar out in my garden that's the first hornworm i've seen this year and uh yeah, that typically means there's probably some more of them out here. And so I'll come out with that UV light tonight, brave the mosquitoes, and see if we can't find some more. Because man, that, that hornworm will decimate a tomato plant in no time. And they're already on the verge of being done. Look at all those spots on there. Yeah, these tomato plants. It's been my best tomato year in a very, very long time. But they're hurting right now. This plant begins way back here and there's about four feet of running bare vine that I've pruned. Then I brought it up to here. But then it just flopped over on itself. And there's another, if I straighten it out, another five feet of vine. So, you know, these plants and this single trellis pruning method, you can watch the video on that uh, up there. But uh, yeah, I'm really impressed with this method. I think I'll use it every year. It really helps to keep away from early blight because you're plant leaves are higher up off the ground and you just the vine runs along the ground yeah that's impressive I'm gonna have to measure some of these things when I pull them out you look at all these wonderful tomatoes coming in on this truss and then you notice over here this cracking and splitting like that this is almost my entire crop is like that and you can see some of it's quite severe and this is caused by over watering or in my case it's caused by too much rain. We've, like I said, we've had rain, tons and tons of rain, 
and you can see it's affecting all my cherry tomatoes. And once they get compromised, well then the birds come in and start pecking at them, the bugs get in there, there's a stink bug. And uh, yeah, now these tomatoes, if you pick them when they first show signs of cracking, uh, you can still eat them, but once they're split open like that, um, that's a vector for infections and bacteria, things like that to get into your tomatoes. And I'm not gonna eat that. Here's a good example of what it looks like when the stink bugs and piercing bugs start going to work on your ripe fruits. They get these discolorations and these blotches. There's some of that kind of naturally in this particular variety, but when the bugs get in there, they really scar up the plant like that. That's discouraging. See what I mean? When you start getting cracking like that, um, bugs can move in and start eating your plants. And it's on all of my tomatoes. In fact, some of my tomatoes are just rotting here out on the vine. So we're pretty much done with tomatoes for this year. As sad as it is, ooh, there's a nice one I might be able to get. Of course, as soon as I pick it, let's, eh, yeah, I don't know about that. Well, there it is. There's some of the common problems you'll have late in your tomato growing season. Uh, although that hornworm, they can show up anytime. But uh, late season, uh, it's usually gonna be a fungal or bacterial wilt and it's gonna get your plants from the bottom up. So keep an eye on that, remove those pestilence leaves, put them in the trash, don't put them in your compost or they'll overwinter there unless you can really keep your compost super hot and most of us can't. Um, but there it is, I hope you found this info useful. I hope we've earned your subscription and we hope to see you next time. Happy gardening to you, bye-bye.